Hello, based on the last video that I made with the contour lines, I thought I was going to try something slightly different today. So what I did was I did a slight variation on that theme. And this time I focused on where the sun should be on the AE map when it's visible and when it's not visible. So I put myself at Porter Williams right about here. You can see the geo coordinates. And what I decided to do was for the following 24 hours, every minute, I recompute where the sun is supposed to be. And when the sun is above my horizontal eye level, so in other words, when the altitude of the sun is greater than zero, then I draw a yellow circle. And when it's below that, I draw a black. So this should represent where the sun is for my local night. And this should represent where the sun is for my local day. And if I step ahead for the next year, you'll see that the sun starts to go towards the north. And then it starts coming back towards the south. And as we can see from this little animation, there is yet another problem flat earthers would have to explain. How is it that if the sun is directly overhead of this location on the AE map, being further than this point, for example, still be visible, and yet when the sun is over here, which is actually closer to Porto Williams, would the sun already fall below the flat earth horizon? Just like I did for the contour lines in my last video, flat earthers accept the fact that there are 69 miles per degree of zenith angle, and these two circles would represent that 90 degree zenith angle and would represent the maximum distance that would be visible on a flat earth. And as you can see, they are nice and round. So if I'm here at Porta Williams, and this represents 90 degrees times 69 point something miles per degree, how is it that the sun is still visible that much farther away from Porta Williams? And as I move ahead towards the Northern Hemisphere's summer, you can see that Porter Williams comes closer to having the sun's position fall inside of that 90 degree circle for the morning and for the afternoon. And yet it still doesn't add up as far as the flat earth is concerned. But as always for the globe, it works just fine. So I'm going to play a few extra video animations of different locations, both for the globe and for the flat earth model. And while flat earthers are watching those animations, they can ponder how that is possible on their flying pizza model. <laughs>
So that's going to be it for now. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, I would appreciate the thumbs up, the subscribe, and all of that other good stuff. I'm going to see you again in another video soon enough. So bye for now.